Hey, how y'all doing out there in YouTube land? This is Stiletto coming at you from the Wild Wild West. Well, I do believe this is part five. Part five. That's Stiletto's four-inch folder collection. Four-inch blade folder collection. Oh, we got Juno coming over here to join us. What's up, sweetie? Huh? Wanna come up here? Hmm? What you doing? Trying to decide on what you want. Do you want to go around to the other side? Huh? What's my girl doing? There she is. There she is. That's my girl. That's my girl. What you up to? Hmm? You hear me starting up a video? Want to come make your cameo? Huh? You thinking about it? Okay, kiddo. I'm going to get started on the video. You can jump up in here if you want to. Love you, sweetie. That's my girl. All right. Today's video is going to be about four maxes. Four maxes. Well, you don't know what you want to do, huh? Come on up here. Grandpa gets you. Grandpa gets you. Come say hi to everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's my girl. All right. Let me whip this one out, sweetie. We got to do this video. You done saying hi? Done saying hi to everybody? Hmm? That's my girl. That's my girl. Sleeping a lot, huh? Mm-hmm. Grandpa wants to make this one, because after we get done making this one, I'm going to make some hamburgers. I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. That's right. That's right. Hmm? Or you just want to chill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's my girl. All right, kiddo. Well, you got to get down. Got to get down, kiddo. All right. So let's get started on this one. The Karambit Queen just left. All right. Got her 20 Karambits. The Karambit Master. This one is going to be about four maxes. And this, uh, where, where am I at? I'm on part five, I think I said. Part five. Part five of the... My four, my four inch blade, that, which really means um, 3.75 or three and three quarters to four and a half inches. Knives I consider to be large sizes. And it's gonna be a variety of brands and, uh, and, um, and different knife configurations or whatever, but they're all gonna be folders that have four inch blades or, or, or categorized as, as, as I would categorize them in the large size. All right, let's get this party started. Here we go. And today is four maxes. I decided to do four maxes all by themselves since I have so many of them. And each one of them is different than the other one. So I decided to do the, do the, let them have their own video. So this is just going to be about four maxes today. First up, my American four max. My American four max. This one has a 20 CV blade. Titanium backspacer, titanium liners, G10 handle scales, and I believe this is probably a, a stainless steel pocket clip, but it could be titanium. I'm not sure. I know I just know Andrew Demko likes stainless steel pocket clips over titanium ones. And this is back in the days when he was doing things the way he wanted to do them, pretty much. Now he's sort of switched up a little bit. He's, he is trying to use like deep carry pocket clips in his knives and stuff like that. Because he doesn't really care for deep carry pocket clips, but he knows everybody else likes them. And this is a beautiful knife. I think these are 4.8 millimeters thick, 4 inch blades. Uh, what else can I say about it? So it's a saber flat ground blade with the swedge on top. Super strong knives. These are like the strongest knives that Cold Steel ever made were these. 
I know they're talking about the new Atlas lock being super strong and stuff, but I, I, it's hard for me to believe that's stronger than a 4 Max. This is the first generation of them, and the fitment on these wasn't exactly perfect. Like you see that the um, the lock bar sinks down a little bit, just a little bit, not a whole lot, just a touch. Not so much where I want to send it back. So I just kept it. This one came from the Knife Center. Absolutely love it. I don't know what company was the, um, was making these. Some people say it was Queen Cutlery, but I have no idea. I don't know for sure who was making them. But, you know, other than that, you know, the fitment on it is pretty good. But that, the only thing I really notice is like the lock bar. A minus the lock bar, it sinks down just a little bit, not a whole lot. And that's the first one. This video shouldn't be too long because they're all the same knife. And basically, you know, they're all the same dimensions. They just they're just made with different materials and made in different places, especially for like the first three of them that you're going to be seeing. They're all made in different places. This was United States. And this was the premium four max. They didn't have the they didn't have the scouts when they made these. They just had these. Next one up, another premium four max, twenty CV blade. All the same specs as this one, except for this one has gray G tint instead of um, I don't know what, 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 what color was this like a sand color or ivory color. I'm not exactly sure what cup what they called this color. But that's the stock color. It hasn't been dyed or anything. That's the way it came. It has titanium liners, titanium backspacer, everything just like the other one did, only this one's made in Italy. And if you ask me, this was the better made one. I think the one made in Italy is a lot nicer than the one made in the United States. The fitment and everything is better. The markings are easier to see and read. I mean, it's just a nicer knife. I think it was done better. There's no lock stick. The other one has a little bit of lock stick. Let me see if I can show it to you. Can you hear that? That's what I'm talking about, a little bit of lock stick. It doesn't go to lock blade mode or anything like that. Nothing like that. It's just that when you push down on the thing, you hear that noise. Push down on the lock bar. Which is no big deal. A lot of cold steel knives have that. This one, the fitment was better. It just functions a little bit better too. I sort of like the way these scales look over the gray ones, but it doesn't matter. This knife is a nicer knife. There's no the the, the lock bar doesn't sink down. It stays nice and flush where it should be. So the fitment on the, the Italian ones, you know, that's what everybody was saying too at that time, at that period, uh, the fitment was better on these. I don't have the, the premium one from Taiwan. Now the new, the new premium one is from Taiwan and actually it's a little bit different than these. These two are pretty much identical. You could probably swap the parts on them if you wanted to. They're made pretty much the exact same way. Only the fitment on this one is just better than this one. Because like you can see like the markings on it. Well, they're both starting to fade a little bit. But this one's always been faded. Let's see how the markings are more clear on this side. Looks like they're getting, starting to get a little patina or something too. Probably should oil them and stuff and make sure they're lubed. These these are these are collectors for me. I don't use them. They just stay in the safe. So they're safe kings. They're not queens. These are four maxes are kings. <laughs> Next one up, the next one I purchased, when the, first, when, when the, when the 4 Max Scouts came out, had to have it. This was the first one I purchased. And right after I purchased that one, then the DLT trading thing came out, and I got the deal treat. let's see them unlock. I got, uh, let me tell you the differences on this one. This one's made in Taiwan, and it has Grivex, um, scales and Grivix backspacers as opposed to titanium backspacer and G10 scales. 
And this one has stainless steel liners as opposed to um, titanium liners. I would say the st stainless steel liners might be stronger than the titanium liners because steel is stronger than titanium. So I sort of like these. And this one has an Oz 10A, Oz 10A blade. That's the old Colt Steel Company still. Oz 10A blade. But it's ground exactly the same way. Saber flat ground with a swedge on top. The only real difference is the blade steel, the, the materials for the liners, the scales, and the backspacer. Other than that, I think it's pretty much the same. I'm not sure if these had titanium um, hardware. I think they probably had st steel hardware. And also, you can see that like the stop pins and stuff are bigger on the on the original ones, the ones made in the United States and, and uh, Italy. The stop pins as opposed to these, they're bigger. That's another difference. And these screw from both sides. This one just screws from one side. See, it doesn't have any screw heads on this side. The torque, scry the torque screw side, I mean the torque head side is on the other side. Whereas these have torque heads on both sides. Another little difference. And what else? Oh, the, the pivot, the pivots are different. This one has a bigger pivot and it is just flush and it's not a little bit nicer. Whereas this one has like a standard cold steel put pivot. So these were a little bit nicer. These are probably a little bit closer to the Andrew Demko's actually customs. These knives are made after um, Andrew Demko's custom series of knives that he made at at uh, Wampum PA before you know before he was making these for letting Costil make these these were these were his, some of his custom series of knives he even had a five max and it's my understanding that Cold Steel's GSM Cold Steel is going to bring it bring, bring out the five max too produce a five max that'll be cool but the blade thickness they're still super thick blades. Like almost five millimeters thick. And these were, um, I want to say I paid 300 and something for this one. I know one of these I paid 200 or oh, something, almost, almost 300. I think it might've been, it might've been the American one because I bought it when, when, um, they were starting to get phased out. Cause at first they were like almost $500. I didn't want to pay that much. I think this was like the last one that Knife Center had, and I bought it. And this one I paid maybe 300 or something like that. I can't remember exactly how much I paid. I'd, I'd have to go look at the original boxes because I keep the receipts in the boxes and everything to find out for you. But I actually paid probably less than what the new one's going for. And these were actually nicer than the new one because they had 20 CV steel. I think the new ones have um, S35VN, I think. I think they're S35VN. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, people. Don't hold, don't hold me to that. Now, I, know, I don't think they're 20 CV blades, though. This one, Japanese AU, AUS, AUS-10, which is an excellent steel, especially for a working knife. I think, I think it's perfect still for this knife. And I like these with stick. And the reason why I got a lot of scouts is because I really like the way the scouts made. And the scouts are affordable. <coughs> Excuse me, people. Let me get a drink of water. And the scouts are more affordable. They're, they're reasonable. You can get them for under $100. This was a DLT trading exclusive. I actually really like this one too. It's got the OD OD green um, Gribex scales. The Gribex on these feels really good. I have no problems with the Gribex scales on these. It feels a lot like a you know like a G10 or something. It feels better. It feels like a real high quality Gribex. Gribex backspacer, OD green Gribex backspacer, DLC coated blade, and um, I think this is probably like a we call it a, um, a Tough X um, black finish on here. It's not a DLC finish. 
for the lock part. The reason why I don't know that is because I've worn a little bit off of it uh, on this one. And if it was DLC, it wouldn't wear off like that. I got two of these when they first came out. And you might sort of be able to figure out what happened with them. Because I had two of these also. So you might, might still be able to see them on the table if you could figure it out. But it's got the full flat ground. The DLC finish on this is really nice too. Next one. This one I should probably open up with this one too. <laughs> Because what I ended up doing was, I'm going to make an all black one. Now they have an all black one. I think you can buy them all black now. But before you couldn't. And so I took a DLT trading one, exclusive, and took one of these. And we, I swapped the parts on them. I swapped the, you know, the, the scales and the backspacer and everything like that. Because I wanted to make a, in the hardware so I could make an all black one. This one used to have black handle scales and black back, um, black, black backspacer. I swap the parts out. This one is a user for me. This one go, This one stays in my um, weapons bag. And not my weapons bag, but my, um, my bug out bag. Absolutely love it. Weapons bag has, um, it's a smaller bag, it's my, it's my um, what do you call it? I forget the name of the, um, the pouch. It's a Maxpedition. I forget this, is, it's a smaller one pouch I have. I keep my own firearms and uh, my firearm and reloads and two knives in it. And the knives I keep in it are two Voyagers, the two, my, um, my Barong, my Barong Voyager is the small one, or the large and the extra large. That's what goes in that bag. And the reason why I decided to go that route is just to lighten it up a little bit. And I put this one in my bug out, bug out bag and this one in my everyday carry bag. <clears throat> so these two are workers. This one right here is the all black one I made from DLT trading by swapping out the handles and backspacer. This was before they had black ones. <laughs> now you can buy a black one, I think. I think I saw them, you know, for sale. Now, as you can see here, I wore out, because I carried this one a little bit, I wore out the, um, the finish on the lock bar. So that makes me think that the lock bar is probably a tough X finish, like they, what they used to use on the old, here you can see on this side. That they used to use on the old coal steels. It's like a black paint. It doesn't really adhere to the steel that well. Absolutely love it though. Absolutely love it. Next one I got was this one. It came from Lucky Bastard. My buddy Lucky. And uh, and Rob at, at uh, um, Snaggletooth. Rob at Snaggletooth made these, and and uh, Lucky gave me one of the ones that he made. This one has, um, what do you call it? Uh, purple veteran or something like that, wood or something, purple wood. I, I forget the name of the wood, but it's a wood handle. And Rob had the had the um, Rob um, acid washed the blades and everything. Then he had it professionally resharpened, and he put a snaggle tooth on it. Absolutely love it. I will never change this knife. I'm not going to modify it. It was a gift. Things like gifts and things like that I don't use. I just I just keep them, in, you know, because I have lots of other knives I could use and abuse. The things that are special to me, I, I just keep them. And the snaggle tooth on this works really well. I probably should put snaggle tooths on the other two I use. Absolutely love it. But it's it's just it's one of these. It's basically one of these that's been acid washed, and um, acid washed, and uh, what else can I say? Uh, swapped out the scales and put the 
put the snaggle tooth on it. Awesome mod. I really like the acid wash finish on these. It really looks nice. And this is my newest one. This is the only one I have that's a GSM one. GSM cold steel. And when I saw it, I had to have it because, you know, I like my Cheetos orange. This one's a user. Absolutely love it, people. Awesome knives. And I like to put these in my, my bug out bag and my everyday carry bag because to me, these are, you know, really good emergency knives because they're basically like a folding fixed blade. I know we're not supposed to, we shouldn't say fix, call folders fixed blades, but this is pretty close to really having a fixed blade. <laughs> this is, this could do, this knife can pretty much do everything a fixed blade knife can do. And that's the same size, I, I should say, with a four inch blade or a five inch blade in that category. It could probably do pretty much everything, you know, because I baton wood with this one. I've, you know, I've done all sorts of stuff with it. It's a really tough knife. It can really handle a beating. Absolutely love these. And if they come out with the 5 Max, I will be getting a 5 Max. Probably get a couple of them. They might take the place of these in, in the bags. <laughs> they might retire these. <laughs> but I absolutely love this one. This, this is like the, I actually, you know, I thought I was going to like this one the most. But after I made them, I like this one the most. Because I just like, it, it just looks like a military knife to me. I like, you know, me, I like military stuff. These function really nice, too. I actually like them better than these, to tell you the truth, people. I know these are the collect the you know the ones that are worth more and they're the big time collectors now because they're no longer in existence. But as far as like if I was gonna pick one to use or whatever, I'd rather pick one of these. I don't know, just they just feel better, they feel like they function better. Excellent knives. Let's see how much see how thick they are. Let's do all the measurements and everything on them. We'll do this one first, the original one. Four point eight two, four point eight two. So they're probably all going to be four point eight millimeter. I bet. The one made in Italy. Four point eight four. Four point eight four. The first one I got. 4.79 and 4.8. So that's what they're all going to be then. They're all like 4.8 millimeters. 4.79 again. 4 .7 .7. This one says 4.77. 4.79 again. 4.81, 4.77 again. All right, let's find out how much they, they weigh real quick. American one goes first. First one I got. 10.1 ounces, 10.1 ounces. Italian was Italian one was the second one I got. 10.2 ounces. And then I started getting the scouts. 10.2 ounces. Remember, this one has steel liners as opposed to titanium liners and tit titanium parts. So that's probably where you're getting the extra weight. Still weighs more than more than uh, titanium. DLT DLT trading, ten point one. So they're all going to be like ten point one, ten point two. Ten 
10.0. Oh, that's the lightest one so far. This one. Let's see what the one with the wood handle is. Wood handle weighs. 9.6. So the wood mitt is a lot lighter than the a lot lighter than the Grib X or the um, G10. Ten point three on the all black one. Ten point three. That's the heaviest one. Ten point oh. Ten point oh on the on Cheetos orange. Blade length. We don't need to measure all of them because they're all going to be the same. I bet. Four inches exactly. 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 And four inches exactly. All right, people. But that's 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 the four max video. That's the four max video for my four inch folders. These are the most heavy duty folders I have. I do not believe any other folder I have is stronger or more heavy duty than the four max. I have all my folders. I don't care what length or size they are, whether they're smaller or longer or whatever. The four maxes are the kings. Four maxes are the strength kings. I don't know of any other folder that's a production-made folder. I'm not talking about a custom-made folder. I'm talking about a production-made folder on the planet that's stronger than one of these. These are the kings. These rule. These rule. That's what I believe. I do not believe an Atlas lock is stronger, a Deadbolt lock is stronger, a, a, a Axis lock is stronger, or any other kind of lock type that there is known on this planet for a production for a production folder that's stronger than these. These are the kings. If you want a super strong folding knife, this is what you get. This is what you get. All right, I, that's my two bits. <laughs> that's my two bits. Anyway. These are the four maxes. I hope everybody's doing good out there. Peace out. Stiletto. This is video number five. Peace.